So we're here with um, George Ferguson, one of the future, well, one of the candidates for future mayor of Bristol. Um, and what I wanted to just to get you briefly to describe to uh, the audience of South Blessed is generally what sort of policies it is that you would bring in if you became mayor. So I know it's uh, quite a big question, but just to kind of um, simplify it to what you feel are the biggest issues that you would be able to accomplish if you became mayor. Right. I think what's really important is to have a proper vision for Bristol, a proper plan for Bristol. I don't think we've ever had it. I think we've stumbled from one policy to the next. We've got party manifestos that I only half believe in uh, with people making promises that are undeliverable, but that's the cynicism of party politics, I'm afraid. And standing as an independent, the first thing I want to do is make Bristol one city, bring everybody together in the interest of making Bristol a better place. I think you've got to inspire and part of that is to do it from the top in terms of Bristol's governance and I want to bring the best people within the council of, from whatever party or none to work with me to make sure that we make Bristol the second city in this country in, in England and because I think we've fallen behind some of the northern cities who have been more challenged and we've got to work that much harder to make quite sure we are the city that everybody talks about. In order to do that We've got to deal with all the social issues. There's massive, I think, massive discrepancy across the city. We're basically a rich city, but the big, big pockets of poverty. And so to do that, we've got to expand the economy. We've got to bring more, more investment in the city. We've got to encourage business to operate in the city. We've got to encourage entrepreneurialism, both large and small, and social entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs to operate in the areas where there is need, so people can live and work. That brings me on to the question of the broader issue of transport and planning. We've got to plan a city that people can afford to move around when they need to. We've got to plan a city where they need, thank you very much, that's great. Okay, where they, where they need, um, excuse me while I pile into this duck here at Canteen. Um, we've got to um, have a city that is planned so that we don't just have housing estates and workplaces and leisure places. I believe in creating communities. That's what I've done around the tobacco factory in, in Bedminster. And it's been a great pleasure. And what we've done is created real mixed use community that is socially mixed, that's mixed in terms of its culture. And I think there was a bit of a monoculture there that needed changing. And we've done everything we can to change that. So I want to use the lessons that I have learned in trying to make Bristol a better place in my own way to apply that to the rest of Bristol. So it's building communities. It's uh, getting Bristol working is really important. Um, I think that we have a disgraceful level of unemployment, particularly youth unemployment, particularly ethnic minority unemployment. We need to deal with those issues and we need to be very active in dealing with those issues quite fast. There are big, big things we can do. If we make Bristol the place everybody wants to come to, immediately you've got a tourism benefit. Then there are lots of jobs, thousands of jobs you can create in tourism. We have some great strengths in the creative industries. We should build those up. We've got two great universities that are complementary. I believe that we could work with our universities um, and, and industry to develop knowledge a knowledge-based economy. Um, we should manufacture more things so that we reduce the amount of travel of goods. I've been talking to the building industry. Why don't we have the equivalent of the Bristol Pound related to the construction industry so that we have as much of the labour and materials coming <laughs> from Bristol, um, for Bristol. So those are, those are some of the issues. I think we, I want it to be a caring city, a city where everybody feels safe, where people who are carers are well supported, that we have excellent daycare, daycare in the communities where it's required for the elderly, for disabled, for, for kids. We have good youth services in the community so people are not necessarily traveling to big hubs across the city, which is a problem itself. Um, and I want to instill um, an attitude within our communities that everybody looks out for each other. I think that's what a mayor can do. A mayor doesn't just have the, the formal power of being the leader and chief executive of the city council. 
the mayor has that soft power, that inspirational power of being able to say to everybody, you all matter, you look out for your neighbours, you make sure that you are part of the governance of this city. So, very, very, very important aspect. Um, and I want to make this city come alive. I want to make it really vibrant. I believe in the importance of the arts and culture and sport and all those things. Okay, so um, obviously, as you mentioned, with the um, background that you have in terms of the tobacco factory, yeah. there, there definitely is a very mixed sort of culture, gender, age group that naturally does kind of go with your past. But the question um, which I think, you know, just through talking to a few people about, you know, saying that I was going to interview you and kind of what were the issues that they thought maybe, maybe come up, is how is that relating to the politics in terms of the fact that you are an independent? Um, so, it, politically, how are you finding your backing then when you're talking to people from different parties? Are, are they as welcoming to this sort of mix? Because obviously now you're, you're all kind of suggesting to them that where they're used to dividing, they're going to have to mix. How are they finding that as a, an idea? The reality is that it's between the Labour candidate, Marvin, and me. And Marvin has said that his cabinet will totally come out of the Labour Party, which is a restricted number of people on the city council. I can't remember exact number, but it's about, it's under 30, I think. Say it becomes a bit more in the next election, the May election, which is the reality. But I will choose a cabinet across all 70 members of the council. And I think this is an essential difference. I won't be choosing them because they belong to a particular party. I'll be choosing them because of their talent and experience and their ability to put Bristol first in all their consideration. And I'll ask every one of them to liberate themselves from the, 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 the um, tie of their party because an awful lot of councillors are driven by their party. They're fixed on their, on their um, party dogmas. And I want to liberate them from that and say, look, this is an opportunity to serve Bristol as I know you would like to do. You're there for a good reason. I believe you've got good intentions. Come and work with me. And I know there are councillors there who would find that a real, a real freedom. And so while I don't expect every councillor to accept my offer to come on the, um, to, to come on my small cabinet of six people, I do expect the best ones and the most genuine ones to do so. And I think it will look bad if people refuse because all I'm asking them to do is serve Bristol in the way that we all want to do to make it the better place and to sign up together to a vision for a better Bristol. Um, again, kind of talking about the sort of broader thing, in terms of some of the issues that the Prime Minister himself might face in terms of his relation to Brussels, and how that kind of that system works. When you bring it down to the scale of where it is now, if you were in the position that you kind of spoke about and you did manage to kind of pick the people who were genuinely for Bristol, you would say at those points at which what is best for Bristol doesn't go along with some grand scheme, whether it's kind of a UK related set of policies or maybe a European set. Yeah. How have you planned at all to deal with those sorts of pressures where maybe you might get the situation where you say, you get told, well, you know, that set of funding which you've allocated for you will not be for you anymore if you continue to try and use it for this path or that path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, an, uh, you know, an example is the, the, the hundreds of millions of pounds of funding in the city deal that the government have um, allocated to Bristol. A lot of that is borrowing ability rather than actual money for transport in Bristol. Transport is one of the biggest issues I've come across in, the, in this whole campaign and quite understandably. I put jobs absolutely at the top. The creation of a vibrant economy for Bristol that creates jobs and good jobs for us all. And transport is one that has probably got the highest spending attached to it and yet it's an unsatisfactory plan. I am not prepared to give the money back which is what has been threatened and what the current administration of Bristol City say will happen if I change the current plan.
but I am absolutely determined and shall negotiate a better way of spending that money. But when it comes to the relationship with um, government and Brussels and the rest of the world, Bristol will have, for the first time, a really strong direct relationship. We will be able to go to Brussels and Brussels will re recognise Bristol's leadership in a way that it doesn't at the moment. We'll be able to go and negotiate with with big companies all over the world and get them to invest here. We might even be able to get other governments to come and invest here if they're excited about what's going on in Bristol. I will build up a very direct relationship that bypasses Westminster when it's appropriate to do so. But I think I could also build up a very good working relationship with, with government to ensure that Bristol gets a really good deal. And the, the new report that's come out from Heseltine about giving much more power and resource to our cities, devolving that power across the country, I think is a real gift to Bristol. And we should make sure that we get our fair share and more based on the fact that we have, um, we've de we're delivering proper leadership and a good plan for the future. Um, so, just thinking about um, all the kind of filming that I've done since I've started my channel and the kind of things that I've had to film, so you know, it kind of varies from um, riots that have happened to Bristol Pound, so positives and negatives that have kind of come across. And there's a kind of general feeling to do with, I think, one thing that threads along with all in terms of those sorts of issues is a thing of transparency. So decisions being made that didn't actually consult Absolutely. the community. So yeah. the people who are watching it, they're always kind of watching it after the effect. So do Absolutely. you have any plans for those? Yeah, I mean, I think consultants, yeah, the, the uh, consultant, the local consultant uh, consultation has been a bit of a farce. Too often, the city council decides what it's going to do and it becomes a selling job. It's not proper participation or con consultation. It's not transparent. And I want to have a very open government. First of all, I want people to feel welcome in the city council itself, that there will be exhibitions, there will be markets, there would be a real vibrancy in the city council building, which I uh, which is currently called the Council House, which seems to indicate it belongs to the Council. It belongs to the people of Bristol. I'm not calling it the People's Palace, but I'll call it City Hall, and because it belongs to the citizens of Bristol, and welcome them in. I want it to be very, very open government. That is my way. I am very transparent in my beliefs. I say I give direct answers to things, not always to my benefit, um, but I believe in being open and honest and then people will believe you on everything, you know, and as soon as you start trying to hide things, then you get um, people disbelieving you on everything. So I think that's a really important, that will be a really important change. Parties maybe are a bit more, um, a, a bit more nervous about open government than I will be as an individual. Um, and. I think I want to make quite sure that we instill that culture right through Bristol's, um, Bristol's various um, organisations. Well, you know, I have to say, obviously, in terms of getting this interview, it wasn't made difficult at all, so that's obviously one thing in, in your favour. Um, I think, just to kind of round up, um, something that I want to ask is, say you don't become mayor, obviously you've got your right on, on the slim chance <laughs> I don't become mayor. What, is, what, are, the, what are the things um, which whoever does become, what is it that you will be looking for to definitely be happening? So obviously you've, got, you've, yeah. you've explained what your policies are and what yeah. you think should happen and obviously all of those things you kind of you hold in high regard. But what are the kind of the definite things that you you expect any mayor for Bristol to do for well, Bristol? Obviously, I, I think that the um, the likely candidates, apart from me, to win. I think there's only one likely candidate apart from me to win. Um, I will make sure that I work as closely as he wants with him to help him realise his vision for Bristol, because if if he and I am talking about he in this case because uh, um, the you know of course there's only one woman candidate which I think is a poor deal in amongst 15 candidates but um, if if 
if he wins, uh, he will win with my goodwill and I will help him realise his ambitions. But I think I have said that I think some of the promises in the manifesto are going to be broken. I don't want to make too much of a deal of that. I do before the election. I want to make quite sure Bristol gets the best deal. And I think as I would try and get everybody to work together, I would work together with whoever wins to, um, uh, saying if they want me to, to, to make sure that Bristol does get the best, best deal and that we do build a really good future for our kids. And I'm really fighting for our kids because it's their future, it's not mine, but I really strongly believe that we should all try as citizens to leave Bristol a better place than we found it, whether we're elected or not. So. Right, well, thanks, thanks a lot for talking with us, and uh, hopefully the best of luck to you and everybody else who deserves uh, here. Yes, and you know, maybe we'll have a conversation post the 15th of November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Vince. It's been a pleasure.